Hello and welcome back to another video. In this episode we're diving a bit of an odd spot, a bridge. So I had to try getting some fish the other day and got absolutely smoked. Went for a main mission but found basically no fish. Even from the wharf here we can actually see poros hanging out in the shallow. Should be a good sign. Hopefully run into some JD, even a king if I'm lucky. Out at sea it's still really quite wavy and gross so we're doing some inshore stuff. Working with the current makes things challenging but also very productive we've got about hour and a half two hours until the high tide so we're going to jump in the water shortly fish that last bit of the incoming hopefully get a feed see what happens but should be a good time regardless all right guys i've come to the unfortunate realization that i've stitched myself up big time and didn't actually bring a spear gun so we're going to be trying to pick up a few flounders on the knife today so that was a major fuck up real major fuck up but we're still going to jump in the water we're still going to have a look around main point of today really is scouting i'm trying to find new spots and if we can come back here with spear gun another time shoot some fish hey that's cool most of the time that i go spear fishing i'm using a float and a float line however there are some instances under which it is preferable to not be using one for example when you're diving around artificial structure or you're really close to shore and you know when you shoot something you can just jump out of the water with it. I would also prefer to not use a float if I'm diving close to a buddy who has one. Bear in mind the fact that when you're not using a float you're not nearly as visible to boat so you need to be very aware of your surroundings. Cruising through the shallows I've got my knife out in anticipation. You never know what you're going to run into and in the shallows here is realistically my best shot at getting a fish. I start the dive off cruising the shallows looking for easy fish that I can get. Stargazers, flounders, leather jackets and John Dorries are realistically the only things that I really have a chance of getting. In the shallows I managed to encounter my first flounder. Getting close to him, I put the knife out, getting ready to stab down with all my might. You've got to be quick with flounders, they're very fast. As I get my knife down, I plunge it into the flounder, believing at the time that I'd actually miss. But I hit the flounder in the side, knife managed to tear out and the flounder swam away. I had a look for it, however, it was to little avail. Tropical mantis shrimp are world renowned for their power. The ones that we get in New Zealand are not as large, not as powerful, but still very spectacular to look at. This one was just cruising through this sunny shallow area, an easy feed for any fish that would come by. Many fish are expert at camouflage. The flounder for one, spectacular camouflage. You gotta keep a close eye out when you're in the water if you wanna spot everything, because there's a lot you're just gonna miss if you don't look hard enough. The New Zealand fish species Perori is one of the most abundant that you will find in our northern coastal waters. Very commonly found in estuaries, around structure, but even out over the sand. It is not uncommon to encounter Perori skulls by the hundred, if not thousands. Perori are a very prolific fish. Not many people target them. They're not the greatest tasting fish out there, so as a result they have become very abundant. As the numbers of other fish species have declined because pororis haven't been targeted, they've stayed healthy. While pororis themselves aren't that great on the plate, they like to hang out with a lot of other species, many of which we like to target as spear fishermen. I have noticed frequently that inside of schools of pororis you will often find trevally. You can have kingfish come through even sharks. When I see a school Porori, even if I'm not going to shoot one, I'll take a dive on the school because I know there's a good chance of other fish coming through during that time. Back into the sandy shallows we have our second encounter with infamous flounder. This one unfortunately was not very keen to stick around. With flounders you don't want to move too quickly, however they're not as dumb as they look so you don't have all the time in the world unfortunately. What happens with this flounder is a pretty odd turn of events. I'm very fortunate that I managed to actually get this fish. I put my knife out, stabbed down, same as the first flounder, cutting it through the wing. However it does a full 360 and returns to my hands. Very well behaved flounder. Excellently trained. I am extremely grateful to the flounders for they have presented me multiple opportunities this day. Despite cooking up the first two I managed to get this one flounder which I was extremely happy about. To get a fish just using a knife I was pretty stoked honestly. I thought this next clip would have made a good thumbnail but my camera was facing too far down. As the tide pushed its way in and the estuary's water level rose these beautiful anemones started to open up on all the pylons. Hanging out with these pawori was honestly very exciting. In the murky water you never know what's going to swim out especially when you're diving a new spot i had honestly very little idea of what to expect so sitting with these pores was a very exciting opportunity to see what else would come by don't just pay attention to what your target fish are doing take in the whole environment paying attention to bait fish and non-target species can give you a good idea of what's going on in the area i remember one time i was swimming with some pores 
thought the acting sus and then had one of the biggest sharks I've ever seen swim out of the mirror. If you pay attention to the baitfish and non-target species, they can give you clues about what to expect. While this particular day wasn't firing figuratively or literally with the spear gun, I am definitely going to be back here in the near future. I see a lot of potential in this area and I would love to dive it some more. I know that I can get some good fish here, so I'm going to be back. Here we are, fish of the day. Beauty flounder, absolute monster as you can see. Got this one on the knife, pretty stuck. So in spite of the fact that I left my gun at home today, the diving today was still thoroughly enjoyable. Highly reminiscent of diving at the Thai restaurant. Lots of quarry around and a few good traps. I'm gonna be back with a spear gun in the near future to put some good work into the area. I see a lot of potential. The amount of current actually going through here is pretty wicked. It was a lot more than I was actually expecting to encounter. But there were a lot of fish around. There really were quite a lot of porori, tons of them. I'm sure during the right time of the year, in summer you run into a lot of kingfish as well. It's meant to be high tide in about 20 minutes, but you can see the current is still just going so hard. This middle section of the channel through here was actually the scariest part to dive. Most current and very murky. All things considered, it was a fantastic day out there. Glad to be out of the water and warm, but we're going to be back again in the near future. Shoot some fish with a spear gun. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one.